Hey guys, this is John Lehman with Lehman Technologies and today we're going to be talking about headphones. Two big types of headphones in, in the studio monitoring world and that's open back and closed back. I've got a Sennheiser HD 600 here which is an open back and I've got an Audio-Technica ATH-M50 which is closed back. Now behind me is a mini DSP Hears setup and it's two calibrated microphones that's going to let us measure these headphones and then look at the data. Um, we're going to go through some spec sheets. We're going to compare the spec sheets to the data, see how they jive or, or not, or what data is maybe missing that would really be helpful for us to determine which headphone to buy. I don't know how you can choose what headphone you're going to buy unless you know that it's going to fit your head and be comfortable. Um, you can read reviews and that, that can be really helpful. But until you try them on, you really don't know if you're going to like how they fit and sit on your ear, especially if you need to work with them for several hours a day. Okay, so here we're going to look at the specs. We're going to start off with the HD 600 and let's see if we can find some information on here that would really help us to make an educated decision between multiple pairs of headphones. All right, let's check it out. Here we go. Specifications. So 12 to 40,500 hertz. That's really wide, right? Human hearing 20 to 20,000 is what is pretty much the accepted standard. So um, the other thing that I would like, I was just talking about comfort, is what about the size of the ear cups? Now, these Sennheisers, they fit me great. I mean, really easy to put on. They just go right over top of my you know, I'm going to say normal size ears and pinea and the earlobe and everything. It's not oversized, um, but I'm kind of a small guy, right? So I'm sure other people, bigger people have bigger heads and they have bigger ears because it's proportional, right? So these are real super good for me because I can even move them around a little bit and not feel like I'm pinching anything. But let's compare these to say the Audio-Technica. These I can rotate out. I can't rotate the Sennheisers out like this but same thing here I have no problem putting these on um, you know they're not as big the cups are not as big as the Sennheiser but they fit me just fine I have no problem these are a bit heavier though uh, and because of all the adjustability and the folding and the plastic boy they make a racket sounds like I'm in a junkyard in there so you know just let's look at the AT M50 now um, yeah, so these are discontinued, just so you know. It's uh, replaced by an M50X. Some people are like, oh, the old ones were better. But, you know, people always say that kind of stuff. Sometimes it's true and sometimes it's not. Sometimes they really do make improvements. I mean, I'm the first guy to kind of bash on big companies, but sometimes they do make engineering improvements and you actually get to experience the, the benefits of that. And then other times, all they're doing is cutting costs and making it sound like they improved something. So, you know, you got to do your own research. That's what we're doing here. Let's learn how to do our research and, and get what we need to do our jobs. So again, let's just look at the specs just so we can see if they have any better information and not really, right? We still have this same two number range. We don't know what's going on in between. Um, the impedance, that's a really useful thing to know. So I'm glad they do at least put that in there. These are real easy to drive. You can plug these into your phone and get plenty loud. So uh, again, nothing about the size on here. I, I don't know what to say here. As far as specifications, there's obviously something missing, you know. So let's go find out what it is, shall we? Okay, guys, so what does it all mean? We looked at the specs and it's kind of a, you got to guess what things are really going to sound like. You can't get any real information from that. The only place that they're different is beyond the human hearing range on both ends of the spectrum. All we can know about is what's outside the audible range. That's really what we're learning from those specs is that all headphones, I mean any headphone that's targeted at professionals is going to say, 20 to 20,000 or more, right? So 15 or 17, I mean, two Hertz down there. Does it, 
<laughs> I mean, it just doesn't matter, right? So, and, and the same on the high end. I mean, come on. Does it really matter what's going on up there? I'm not saying it doesn't because, as I mentioned earlier, there could be additional benefits down below if you can if you can make your device reproduce all the way to 40k even if it's not great the transient response isn't great up there you're probably going to be able to do a better job at 20k but at the end of the day how much does that really matter and how much other stuff is really wacky that they're not even telling us about so that's what we're going to look at here um, right now you're looking at uh, this is Room EQ Wizard. Okay, I'm going to put a link down below. You can download this and play with it. It's totally free. If you want to do multi mic measurements, then you got to pay some money. I can't remember what it is now, 100 bucks or something. Um, as far as measurement software goes, though, it's still, even if you pay for it, it's really reasonable. But let's dig into this a little deeper. Let's go over here and look at the decay. Now this is the HD 600, so you can see way up here, this first line is the same exact curve as we had over here, all right? It's not in the same place on the screen, okay? But it's close, okay. <laughs> I just centered this one so that the peak was right at the top. You know, you see the decay here and you see all of this. Now what's coming down here, these different colors represent time so if we look down here this is the initial time right and then here's 20 milliseconds later and then here's 40 milliseconds later and here's 60 milliseconds later so this is the energy because over here on the left we have spl again right so this is the energy decaying over time right so where did i stop 80 milliseconds is our next one that still looks a lot like the initial frequency response, right? It's starting to soften a little bit. And there's a notch down there at 60 that's getting a little deeper. So for whatever reason, that energy right there at the bottom of that notch is dissipating quicker than the rest of the energy. Why is that? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. But here we look at 100 milliseconds and pretty much everything is gone except for a little bit in the low end, right? So we can see that here. There's a little bit of energy hanging on. It's interesting because here it looked like it was going away quicker. And then here, uh, it looks like it stuck around. So, but anyway, we had a really flat decay. And then at 100 milliseconds, everything's almost gone, right? And then if we go further, you know, we can see a little bit more hanging on here and this one just a tiny bit more and this one yeah almost off the screen now so now i want to look at the m50 okay now this is a whole different ball of wax right look at this the 100 millisecond all this energy pretty much starting at 85 90 and even if you want to count these up here at 100 there's so much energy hanging around inside this ear cup right that energy is is still there being able to be heard okay at this late stage in the game and even later i mean we turn these on look here 120 milliseconds we still got this 55 hertz right big peak still there and and still at 140 and at 160 okay so I was only looking at, at up to 100 milliseconds because this really was stark, right? You saw this nothing over here. And then you see all this energy still staying there. And I never hear anybody talking about this. We talk about it in room acoustics a lot. It's a big problem in, well, in any room really, but in small rooms especially, we can't get rid of the low end. It just stays around and it stays around in really bad ways like different modes. You know, so you'll have some frequencies, and this happens in, in loudspeakers too, by the way. They call it one note bass, right? So there's so much energy stored up in these boxes, what, you know, and, and they do that on purpose to make them sound bassier. But the problem is it's not clear. It's basically distortion, right? Because you can't hear all the notes, right? Every time that cone moves, there's such a strong resonance at one frequency that that's all you ever hear. 
even though they're playing different notes, you only hear this one note, it sounds like. There's all these things that we have in room acoustics and speaker design, and we talk about them. A lot of people talk about them, but nobody talks about this problem in headphones. And I think it's one of the big reasons why headphones sound so different, and especially why an open back headphone sounds so different from a closed back headphone. And sure, initially, when you put on a closed back headphone, you're like, woof, it's bassy, it sounds like it's really doing something. But you realize that it's, it's lacking something in clarity, right? There's just not the definition that you get from an open back headphone. And, you know, I've never seen somebody talk about this. So that's why I thought it was important to bring it up. And that's why I recommend you to mix on open back headphones if you possibly can. Um, certainly, you got to get a good pair of headphones no matter what they are, right? And if you need to be in a noisy environment or you need to not disturb the people around you, then you're going to be limited to close back. But know this, even though we can go in here, let's see, I'm on the M50, we can go in here and look at that. I uh, basically eq the m50 to be flat right i don't know why it didn't take care of this this does this automatically <laughs> but but anyway you know we cut out a lot of that low end you know that low end started boosting up here at over 400 through here and then all the way down and so it eqs all that out and and makes it basically flat but it's not going to fix the decay you're, you're going to fix the magnitude response with curves generated in Rim EQ Wizard. You're not going to fix this. We have to pick our battles. And, you know, to me, the most effective use of our time is to educate ourselves and develop our skills. Hey, guys. Thanks a lot for sticking with me through this video. I know we got deep in the weeds on decay time and the difference between a closed back and an open back, but I think it's a really fundamental thing that we understand why things sound the way that they sound. But we didn't talk about frequency response and maybe what you can do to mitigate some of the variations between your different headphones. If you need to go between an open back and a closed back for different environments, but you wanna kinda of have the same sound as best you can given the decay time problem, you know, we can do a little bit of EQ. So we're gonna cover that in another video. And we're also gonna dig deeper into the impedance specification and why that's such an important thing to look at. So subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell if you wanna know when these videos are ready. Thanks a lot and I hope you have a great day.